Hello everyone. This video is one of the first videos I intend to do in a series of Powerbox core transmitters. This particular video is going to cover off some of the hardware entities for the core transmitter. Uh, the Atom transmitter is very similar. Uh, matter of fact, most of the, the majority of hardware features are exactly the same. Um, there's just some additional features on the core versus the Atom. Um, I'd like to um, just cover off the hardware features in this video because I don't want it to be too long. So it's really intended for those that are possibly looking at purchasing a Powerbox transmitter in the future. Uh, those that have already got one will be well, overly familiar, you know, well familiar with the um, hardware features as they should have been playing with the transmitter for a few weeks or months or years by now. Uh, these transmitters have been out since around about, I believe, 2019. And the software is now matured to a state which is um, very stable um, and pretty much covers off, you know, 99% of the features that pilots would need. And obviously, with a system like this, the um, software features will keep improving. So in some later videos, I'll be covering, trying to endeavour to cover off the... Um, software side of things in a lot more detail. Okay, so one of the obvious features is the color screen. Uh, the color screen um, is a touch sensitive screen. Um, we do have some hard coded buttons along the bottom to access some frequent menus. You have a left and right navigation key, which you don't really need because you can actually swipe left and right on the screen. Um, in particular, you might see this picture of the servo. So you say, okay, what's that? So we click on the servo and it takes us straight to the um, servo screen. If I go back to the home page, it takes me back to my pre-programmed home page. Um, basically, navigation is via swipes. So you can see here we've got brightness, the um, sound output. Uh, I can just click on another uh, menu item there. And we've got various various items that are selectable and as you can see you know scroll touch interface no different to your common smartphone okay so i'll cover off like i said i'll cover off the software entities in, a, in some subsequent videos so at this stage i really want to concentrate on the hardware side of things so apart from the screen um, i can tell you for a fact it runs an internal industrial linux pc for the screen navigation, the graphics, that sort of side of things. There's a separate CPU which runs the flight control systems. So basically the Linux PC does the graphics interfacing um, and then you have a separate CPU which runs all the uh, processing for your model. And a lot of other brands do this. Um, case in point, Fataba, uh, they run Windows CE and basically have a separate CPU that runs the front end for that, you know, all the graphics, the interfacing, etc. And then a separate CPU to run the actual flight controls. And the reason most manufacturers do this is for reliability and security. Um, if you have an issue with a lockup on the um, graphics side of things, it doesn't affect the uh, actual flight control system, so you can still keep safely flying your model around. It's pretty standard these days. Okay, um, one of the really handy features I've found, mainly on the telemetry side of things, is a text-to-speech converter. So I know, I think, um, I think Spectrum have also introduced this recently, but Powerbox, I think, were the first running a text-to-speech converter. So basically, you don't have to copy lots and lots of WAV files or MP3 files into the, piece, into the transmitter. You can just basically type it out on the screen and uh, it just replays that back in numerous voices. You can select from uh, a substantial list of voices in different languages as well. Um, you know, so if you're German, English, French, um, I think there's Spanish. There's a whole lot of languages in there. Um, I obviously use English, but um, yeah, there you go. That's that's a really handy feature because it saves a lot of time. You can just type in the text in your telemetry. So, for instance, if you want it to say ten volts. You can actually just type in a one zero and then volt the word volts after it and it will actually clearly speak that um, that that text back to you. 
Um, what else have we got inside the actual unit? We've got um, a GPS, um, an internal GPS, um, pretty standard on some other systems as well. There's a nine axis motion center uh, sensor. Um, oh, a big one's the Wi-Fi capability. So you'll see the little um, Wi-Fi icon there. So at the moment, I don't have it connected to my Wi-Fi network. So the Wi-Fi is predominantly used for software downloads. So this transmitter uh, basically can be updated over the web, or if you're using your phone out in the field, you could theoretically just hotspot to your phone and away you go. That works really well. Um, there's been uh, two software upgrades since I've owned this transmitter. I've had it for about a year and it's pretty seamless, quick, easy. You don't have to fuff around with a PC or whatever. It's, it's, it works really well, very seamless. And adding to the Wi-Fi functionality, functionality the Powerbox systems also offer wireless update of their receivers. So if you've got a receiver buried in your aircraft somewhere, the uh, transmitter can basically upgrade the receiver wirelessly. So no more having to dig out a, a receiver buried in the uh, tail fin of your aircraft, etc., etc. Very handy. Okay, so let's start with some of the more hardware -y things. So underneath this front flap, I'll just move the transmitter over and I'll zoom into this um, into this section of the transmitter. Just bear with me. I'm actually using a, uh, a Samsung phone for the video. So hopefully the quality won't turn out too bad. So from left to right, we have a stereo headphone socket. So a pretty standard headphone socket. Um, so you can use headphones if you like. The inbuilt speakers, uh, it's got quite good volumes, very good uh, power, audio power amplifier in it. Very clear audio. It's not crackly or anything like that. It's crystal clear audio and quite loud. I fly a lot of nitro and um, turbines and um, uh, other internal combustion engine type models. And I really appreciate the uh, volume level from the speaker. But anyway, you've got headphones for those that uh, would like to use headphones. There's a DC charging jack. Now, if you look carefully, there's two LEDs, which are obviously not illuminated at the moment. There's a battery one and a battery two. There's actually two internal batteries in the core. And um, Powerbox, um, one, of, one of their philosophies is basically to have redundancy on their systems. And they're very well known for their uh, aircraft systems. Um, voltage regulators, um, basically power box units, which feed power to all your servos and flight systems. Um, those of you that have used them in the past know uh, many of those use dual battery setups. Well, it's no different to this transmitter. There's actually two batteries inside the transmitter. However, two batteries, yeah, yeah you know, it's not such a fan, you know, um, engineering marvel piece. But what they've also done, they've actually got two separate, fully independent uh, power supplies inside the transmitter. So basically you could lose one power supply um, and, and the transmitter will still function fine. So the two batteries are connected to two power systems inside the uh, transmitter. So it's very unlikely you'd lose both. I mean, most transmitters, you know, it's pretty rare that you actually lose something in the power, power supply side of things. Um, most of the circuitry is reasonably bulletproof. But, you know, Powerbox, to their credit, they've uh, doubled up on the uh, power systems inside the transmitter. Okay, let's move on to this um, USB. So USB-A connector here. That's predominantly for a USB stick. So you can promptly plug a USB stick in and gives you an easy way of removing, say, log files um, or adding files to the transmitter. Um, having the USB stick is um, quite handy there. There's also a micro USB connector as well, which is currently unused. And just to the right of that, there's a um, servo jack as well. So this particular servo jack allows you to plug in a servo and you can use it as a servo tester. So that's a sort of very basic functionality. However, you can also reconfigure that, that port. So not only is it, is it an output, you can also use it as an input. And um, as an input, you can convert it to like an S bus input and use it for a trainer facility. So, for instance, I use Fataba and Spectrum transmitters as a buddy box. So I can have a Spectrum transmitter 
connected to a receiver, which then feeds S bus into this port. And um, I'll do the same for Fataba. So you can use a uh, Spectrum transmitter or a Fataba transmitter or any other transmitter that you can sort of uh, get an S bus signal out of, um, basically as a buddy box unit. So the transmitter, the student transmitter, connects wirelessly to a receiver, and the receiver S bus output connects to this port. So normally I just use a bit of Velcro on the back of the transmitter and stick the receiver on the back, and um, that then provides me a wireless training system. Works really well. Okay, I'll just um, zoom back out so we can see the uh, whole transmitter. Let's see how we go there. It's not too bad. And let's head over to the side of the transmitter. And, you know, it looks pretty standard sort of layout. Um, you know, most of us are very familiar with these sort of layouts. You've got your toggle switches. Um, they're nothing um, to be excited about. You know, your standard, you know, three-way toggle switches. There's two ways in the full back. Uh, all these switches are pretty much user-changeable. Um, you can actually purchase locking switches, so you can have the uh, the pull locking switches, which are commonly seen with people with jets or jet turbines. They tend to like to use those switches when I fly turbines, but I just find the standard switches are fine for my for my use. Um, I find the locking switch is annoying because if I want to flick it in an emergency, you have to physically pull the the switch up and move it position, whereas a toggle switch is easier to flick on or off. Of course, you run into the risk of accidentally turning it on and off if you're not careful. Okay, so on the left and right-hand sides of the transmitter, we have these sliders. Now, I have the optional aluminium arms here. So the standard transmitter comes with a little plastic arm. Now, these optional alloy levers, basically, because I'm a pinch flyer, I can easily adjust the lever from the top, whereas the plastic ones only have an adjustment at the bottom. Um, these le particular levers are laid to easily and comfortably adjust it from the top. Um, one thing to point out is there's no analog potentiometers on this radio. Um, all the analog inputs, so you've got the two potentiometers at the front, the two side levers, and obviously you've got the gimbals. Everything is driven via Hall effect devices. As a matter of fact, the levers and the, the front two front potentiometers actually supported with dual ball raced <laughs> bearing holders. Um, they're extremely smooth. Um, I love the levers. They're probably the finest I've ever used on any radio. Um, and um, yeah, they're very smooth. Um, like I said, no potentiometers, fully digital using Hall Effect devices. Um, they're brilliant. Same with the pots on the front here. They do have a centre detent, except for the, uh, the, sorry, the sliders have also got a centre detent, as well as the pots. Um, there's no ratchet mechanism, so for those that prefer a ratchet mechanism, um, tough luck, you don't have one. Just the centre detent. Okay, so, yep, we've got the Hall Effect gimbals. So, quad ball bearing gimbals, nice and smooth. One thing I really like, uh, I'm predominantly a heli pilot as well. So I prefer very light um, friction on my throttle stick with virtually no stiction. So all I can say, there is absolutely no stiction on the core transmitter. It's probably one of the best throttle uh, gimbals I've ever used. Um, my JR12X is probably, my old JR12X is probably second to this. Um, extremely smooth. Um, you can adjust the throw of the uh, throttle stick. So I've actually reduced mine slightly, which I prefer. Um, I don't want full throw on my throttle stick. It's just something that I'm used to, uh, especially on my 3D helis. Uh, one thing that's quite unique on the gimbals that's not really noticeable to the average person is the fact that when you move the gimbal on the majority of other radios that I have seen, um, you basically move a magnet over a Hall Effect sensor. So Powerbox have come up with a slightly different way of doing things. So instead of moving the actual magnet, they have a fixed magnet, a fixed circular magnet, which looks like a toroid. And what they do is actually move the sensor around the magnet. 
And pa apparently what they found was uh, by doing this, it basically eliminates um, issues with any sort of um, drifting and basically um, any sort of calibration constants that they require for the, the actual Hall effect sensor is eliminated. So they don't need to do any software calculations to take any take out any non-linearities. Um, I don't know, really know enough about it, so I don't know whether you know that works or doesn't work. But yeah, there you go, something different compared to other radios. Okay, the main case, the case is plastic. Um, the core actually has a carbon fascia. Um, it's actually not real carbon, but um, it's it's like a uh, water transfer type carbon. Uh, it looks quite nice. Uh, one thing to say is the case is extremely thick. Um, it's probably, I mean, this transmitter is very uh, very solid. It doesn't creak, doesn't you know? You can flex, try and flex the case. It just doesn't move. And the reason, one of the reasons, is is the plastic halves of the case are just super thick. Um, I didn't actually measure it with my verniers. Um, one other thing to say is you will not see any self-tappers anywhere on this transmitter. You actually have bolts holding this together. I think they're four mil bolts off the top of my head. So four millimeter stainless steel cap head screws or bolts. And um, they tap into uh, brass inserts. Extremely solid, no creaking, no flexing. Um, Again, probably one of the most solid cases I've used. Probably the next one down from this is my old JR12X. We had a magnesium frame. Um, this is on par with that. Not quite as heavy, but just as solid, if not more solid. Uh, as a matter of fact, the top section you use as a handle. It's actually designed to be used as a handle. The actual antennas are in here. Um, and... Um, that's how solid the case is. You can actually, you know, just grab it with one hand, flick it around. It just does not flex. It's just super solid. Probably still don't want to drop it because you'll break it, but, you know, you'll break a switch or two and put a few scratches on it. But uh, there you go. Super solid transmitter. Okay, let's start at the main switch. Switch here. Again, in power box fashion, they don't have a standard on-off switch. So to turn the unit on, you have to depress this button for about three seconds. The LED inside the switch will turn red. It'll flash red. Uh, you press it again, and then basically the unit will boot up. And then to switch it off, it's the reverse. So, you know, basically at the moment it's on, you'll see the green LED in the switch. You hold it down, it turns red. And if I push it again, it'll flash and then switch off. Again, it's just a safety feature, so you can't you know, accidentally switch it off just by pushing the button once or twice. You, you have to forcefully hold it down for about three seconds and then activate the switch on or switch off procedure. Um, we do have a couple of momentary buttons here, left and right. These are fully programmable. You can use it for trims or as an input. Um, you can program for latching action or just straight momentary. There's also another two little momentary buttons on the, on the sides of the transmitter there. So these are Quite handy to access, um, especially if you're a pinch flyer. Um, I mainly use them for timer events, um, but you can use them like um, you can use them for a trim. So, for instance, if I use these two for trims, you can use that for say left trim adjustment, right trim adjustment, or you can use the two um, shoulder ones here for the same purpose. Again, fully programmable, um, and yeah, you can just use them as any other typical switch. Uh, the trim levers here, you'll notice these trims are offset. So normally on most transmitters, you'll have a, a trim sort of below the center line of your joystick. And this side one will be up here somewhere. And normally when you're flying, especially if you're trim, you know, you're trying to reach over here somewhere. It's a bit awkward. But with the two together, sort of closer together, they've thought about this, obviously. It just provides the user a slightly easier access to use the trims. Um, they're just, you know, standard momentary trims. Again, fully programmable um, as per most transceivers these days. Okay, just above that we have uh, the power switch, I should say. We've got your um, hook for your neck strap, if you use the neck strap. Uh, this transmitter, I think it weighs just over a kilo, so it's not a light transmitter. But those that are used to the, you know, jetties, um, the old JR12X, for instance, uh, Fataba, um, 
32 um, MZ, the old 18 uh, MZ, um, they're reasonably heavy. Um, I, I prefer a heavier transmitter only because I'm used to it. But obviously, if you're one of those types that likes a more um, a lighter transmitter, you might be disappointed with the, the weight of uh, you know, a one kilogram transmitter. Uh, I use mine with a neck strap. Um, if you're one of these pilots that thumbs and holds it holds a transmitter in the hand, probably not too bad. But if you're a pinch type fly, you probably definitely want to use a neck strap. The transmitter itself is also available in a tray version as well for those that prefer that sort of configuration. Um, just above the neck strap holder we ha or um, clip, we have the um, speaker. So there's just a couple of holes there. Again, extremely clear audio. Um, you won't be disappointed by the um, quality of the audio. And then we have the two um, potentiometers, uh, which are not really potentiometers. Um, rotary controls or rotary encoders is probably the more technical term. Again, like I mentioned before, dual ball race um, support on the shafts. Um, so there's actually two ball races in there. It's a pretty crazy sort of design. And then, um, yeah, it's basically a Hall effect sensor on the on the back of the uh, shaft. So as you rotate it, you're basically um, rotating a Hall effect sensor. Very smooth action, center detent, quite nice to uh, manipulate. Um, just above that, on the core, apparently this is not available on the Atom, but on the core there's a little ambient light sensor. So that's handy for the LCD display. So if you're out in sunlight, the display will gradually brighten up. And then obviously if you come inside or if you're in the shade, the display automatically dims to your preset um, level. It's pretty handy, I suppose. You know, you save a few couple of hundred milliamps between full brightness and um, low level brightness. Um, what else have I? I'm just reading a piece of paper. I've got a few notes on here. I've mentioned the toggle switches. Oh, the side grips. So one of the things that's really different on this transmitter is the inclusion of these side grips. So these are actually a synthetic material. It feels a bit like suede, but it's definitely not suede. Um, it's called Alcantara. So it's used in a lot of European cars for uh, steering wheel um, covering, um, dashboard covering, roof lining. Um, it's a sort of slightly expensive material. Um, and at first I thought it was a bit odd including this in a transmitter. But having now used it for about a year, I actually quite like it. I quite enjoy it. For those that fly in the cold, it's a godsend because basically there's just no metal, hard metal surface anywhere. Um, so you've got this Alcantara um, side grip material. And uh, it, it really is um, great for grip control because... It provides a level of grip that you just don't get on a harder surface like a plastic or those sort of fake rubber type surfaces. And even rubber itself, when you get a bit sweaty, um, it'll slip. Whereas the Alcantara uh, absorbs some of your sweat. And you think, oh, okay, it'll get a bit gunky or, or dirty, whatever. Well, the other advantage is um, there's only two screws holding each side grip on. So it takes all of like 30 seconds to pull the side grip off. And you can actually wash them if need be. Um, like I said, I, I fly nitro um, machines, so you know, muck around with synthetic oils and whatever. And I've used this transmitter for about a year now, and I haven't really had any dramas with it. Um, I mean, I don't purposely go spilling fuel all over my, my equipment, but um, it's nice to see that you know I haven't even washed these yet, and they still look brand new. So I haven't had any dramas there. I quite like it now. It'd be hard to go for me to go back to a uh, normal transmitter. Okay, well that covers off most of the hardware things. One thing I'd like to mention, I did sort of briefly touch on it before, is the uh, antennas are in this top section here. Now, if you pull apart the majority of transmitters on the market, just about all of them use a uh, quarter wavelength Omni type antenna which is not really ideal in some situations, especially when they're mounted near displays and, um, and things like that, because the pattern, the omnidirectional pattern, gets distorted by any sort of conductive object, whether it be some other electronics like the display. Um, they're not really designed, an omnidirectional antenna is really designed to be placed external to the device like we used to have with the older radios. You had your flip-up antenna. Um, that's sort of ideal for an omnidirectional antenna. 
But these days, you know, everybody doesn't want an antenna sticking up from their radio. So what Powerbox have done, and they have done this for many years, um, even before Powerbox took over this particular system, it was another manufacturer, but uh, we won't go there. The antennas in here are what they call a ceramic flat panel antenna. So they're like a little um, circuit board antenna. So there's no actual um, coax cable, for instance, forming the antenna. Now, the advantage of doing that is you can have a lot higher gain in a smaller package. Uh, but not only that, is the actual um, RF pattern is actually concentrated like a dome sort of around the top of the transmitter. So you don't have any radiated signal from underneath. So with a typical Omni antenna, it radiates in a donut pattern all the way around. About, you know, probably about half your uh, radiated energy is basically aimed at the ground when you're flying. So you know, it's a bit of a waste. So with this particular scenario, that, that energy that normally would be wasted by being um, aimed at the ground is all basically transmitted at the top of the radio in a dome sort of shape. Um, I should have had a drawing or something to put up here. So basically, there's a lot, slightly higher gain. Um, there's around about 5.5 dB gain per antenna on this, um, on this system. And the advantage of that, your RF link budget, which means basically the loss between the transmitter, uh, the signal leaving the transmitter by the time it gets to your receiver, and also your telemetry coming back, um, you just basically have a higher gain path figure for that, for that um, RF system. It, basically, from an RF perspective, it's a much more um, um, efficient design. And um, it just results in higher performance on the RF link. Simple as that. Okay, one other thing I'd like to touch on before I um, finish this video is the telemetry. So, again, I'll, I'll cover all this stuff in, in a lot higher detail um, in later videos. However, the telemetry is... Uh, on, on the Powerbox systems is probably one of the best out there at this point in time. Uh, the reason being is the way they've implemented it. And because they have you know could start from a clean slate, they didn't really have any hang-ups with any old systems that they had to basically um, still keep working. So they started afresh, started new, and they use what they call a P2 bus um, for their telemetry. It's a high-speed data link. Um, the system can actually handle 250 telemetry sensors, which is, you know, a pretty crazy figure. Just not many of us will even get sort of anywhere near close from that perspective. But the other advantage is the fact that it's very fast. It can actually um, basically handle 800 16-bit data packets per second. So basically 800 uh, values per second can actually be fed back to the transmitter from your receivers. Um, one other thing I'll cover off in another video again is when I talk about the receivers is the receivers transmit full power. So it's a full power telemetry link. So basically, even at the maximum limit of the transmitter, you still will receive your telemetry. A lot of other systems don't transmit telemetry back at full rated TX power, whereas Powerbox do. And also, um, the system supports multiple receivers. Each receiver... Um, can transmit can handle telemetry. So if you've got say four train uh, four receivers on your aircraft, each one of those receivers can have its own sensor or sensors plugged into it, and each one of those receivers can basically send that information back in real time back to the transmitter. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's probably run long enough. It's about 29, 30 minutes now. So um, that'll be the conclusion of this video and. Um, like I said, in the near future, I'd like to start covering off a lot of the software features. And uh, with a, basically the aim is to provide those that you know already have one of these transmitters, you know, some insight into some of the tricks and tips and tricks as far as the software side of things is concerned. Okay, thank you all. Thanks all for watching.